Greetings YouTube, JC, Bad Edit Pro, with a video about audio, and we'll get to that in just a moment. Now, you might be thinking there's something wrong with your browser, or your flash player isn't working properly, because you're not seeing anything on your screen. Don't worry, everything's fine, I'm keeping you in the dark on purpose. Because before we get on to the rest of the video, I have a confession to make. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a cartridge maniac. I have a disease. Look at this. This is ridiculous. These are all of the phono cartridges that I have collected since the beginning of the year 2010. Now, you've heard that sometimes an alcoholic can recover and be completely clean for 20 years and get one drink and then he's hooked again. I think it's happened to me. Because not only do I have two Shure cartridges, two Audio-Technica cartridges, and an Ortofon and a Stanton cartridge now, I have yet another Audio-Technica cartridge. And that's what this video is about. I feel so much better now that that's off my chest. Now we can get on with the video. You're looking at a picture of a Thorin's TD240 turntable. Uh, this is a very high-end turntable brand and you will notice that the price on it is $1,029 which is quite a chunk of change to spend on a turntable. But you'll also notice that the turntable comes advertised as coming with an Audio-Technica AT95E cartridge. Here's a close-up of the Audio-Technica AT95E phono cartridge. It won't win any beauty contests. As a matter of fact, it's one of the ugliest cartridges that I have ever seen. However, if Thorin's is shipping them with their new high-dollar, high-end turntables, they must sound pretty good, right? That's what I assumed. And they must be pretty expensive. I was intrigued when I found out about this little cartridge and decided to dig up some technical specifications on that cartridge. And here we are at the Needle Doctor website looking at the technical specs. The first thing you'll probably notice is, is that the output voltage is relatively low compared to many moving magnet cartridges, 3.5 millivolts. The first cartridge uh, that I started this quest on uh, with was the uh, Stanton L720EE cartridge. Now that has a rated output of 3.2 and it was the cartridge that arrived on my Lab 2000 turntable and pretty much I've been judging all the cartridges since then against that one. I found out that the lower output does seem to work better with uh, my preamplifiers both in my Optimus stereo receiver and in my Optimus mixer. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, should this LP120 turntable get hooked into uh, that mixer, I'm good to go as far as that is concerned. You'll also notice that it boasts stereo separation greater than 20 dB. I think it's a lot more than that. Even though the cartridge is not yet thoroughly broken in, it does uh, sound very spacious. The stereo is as as good or better than anything I've heard thus far from modern cartridges. Uh, one of the specifications that really makes me happy is the tracking force. It's recommended at 2.0, and the range is very narrow, 1.5 to 2.5, which means that this cartridge is specifically designed to track at 2.0. Many years ago, I had a Pickering cartridge, which I dearly loved, and of course Pickering is out of business, and I cannot find that cartridge again, and one of the things I recall about that cartridge was that it tracked at 2.0. That seems to be a very fine tracking force for getting the best out of your LPs without causing too much damage. Many moving magnet cartridges today only track at 1.25 or 1.5. On the other side of the scale, the professional cartridges track at 3, 4, 5 grams, which is still a bit much for me. So this is a wonderful compromise to have a cartridge that tracks at 2 grams. And because it does track at 2 grams, it seems to work very well with the high-mass professional tone arm that comes with the LP120 turntable. The audio is very clean. There is very little sibilance, very little splatter. The uh, treble is not punched out, but it's definitely there, and you can tell that this cartridge does go way out uh, toward that 20,000 
cycle mark because uh, the high end is very clear and very crisp. Not a whole bunch of bass here, uh, but it does thump if you put the right record on. So it doesn't uh, overemphasize either the high or the low. I like that a lot. And once again, that's a characteristic that reminded me of my old Pickering cartridge from years ago. So I'm very happy about that. Now, um, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, so he saw this cartridge and he had to mortgage the house to buy it because it must be very expensive if Thorns is putting it on their turntables. Well, I'm getting ready to scroll up this page, and when I do, I'm going to shock you because Needle Doctor is selling this cartridge for $49.95. And that it seems to be the uh, price across the market. You can pick one of these up at a specialty shop for uh, around 50 bucks. Um, they're not being sold uh, through uh, some of the bigger dealers like Amazon. You kind of have to search for it and go to a spe specialty place like NeedleDoctor.com here to get one of these. Um, if you have a turntable that takes a half-inch standard cartridge, I would encourage you to seriously consider picking up this cartridge. Not only is it a fine-sounding cartridge, but Audio-Technica claims that because of the special cantilever design and uh, the very precise diamond that they use that you're going to get much longer stylus life out of this particular cartridge uh, than you would um, with uh, some of the other ones. Uh, that's something that's good. The stylus has run about $37 to be replaced, and if you can make it last two years, so much the better. Um, the cartridge itself is a ugly thing that sounds wonderful. It's the AT95E by Audio-Technica and you got to check this thing out. I feel so much better now knowing that I could share my cartridge obsession with you and I hope you enjoyed the video. JC, Bad Edit Pro, waving bye-bye. Thanks for watching.